joy is the job. Joy is the part of it because it's the thing that allows you to know that your life matters and that you are worthy of pursuing the things that matter to you, but in a way where you don't feel that you're taking away from society or you're being selfish. You're listening to Make Some Noise Podcast, episode number 563 with guest Erica Lasson. Welcome to Make Some Noise Podcast, your guide for strategies, tools, and insight to empower yourself. I'm your host, Andrea Owen, global speaker, entrepreneur, life coach since 2007, and author of three books that have been translated into 18 languages and are available in 22 countries. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a lesson that will help you maximize unshakable confidence, master resilience, and make some noise in your life. You ready? Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. As always, I am so grateful that you are here with me and my guest. If you listen to the podcast the day it comes out, this announcement will be helpful. (laughs) I know a decent amount if you do. Uh, So tonight, November 15th, 2023, I am going to go live on TikTok for the first time which I'm really excited about. So if you can come, please join me, 6 p.m. Eastern time, that's 3 p.m. Pacific. And it is the middle of the night if you're in Europe or anywhere in that area. But I would be super pumped if you could join me live. I'll do some shout outs, answer questions. It's gonna be like a ask me anything slash Q&A type of thing. And I hope to do these regularly. In fact, I hope to record some mini-sodes live on the podcast and take your questions and it'll be kind of, you know, spontaneous and fun. I, I love doing that kind of stuff. So please join me on TikTok. I'm Hey Andrea Owen over there if you don't already follow me. All right, today's guest, I just, I just love her. You're gonna love her energy as much as I do. She and I have so many similarities in that regard, but let me tell you a little bit about her. Erica Lasson is a multi-passionate entrepreneur, wife, and a mom on a mission to transform the world through radical Joy. In her role as a corporate joy strategist, Erica serves corporations, entrepreneurial women, and caregivers as they learn how to rediscover joy and well being in their lives and careers. Through her propriety framework, the Joyerny process, Erica leads workshops, speaking engagements, community based challenges, and coaching and consulting to build intentional daily habits around joy in every area of life, one feel good thing at a time. So without further ado, here is Erica. Erica, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Andrea. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. (laughs) I'm so excited to have this conversation about joy. And it's a good thing that I'm having a good day because it would be weird if I was in the depths of despair. (laughs) And if you were, don't worry. By the end of this conversation, your joy levels would be at an all time high. Trust. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I take that challenge. (laughs) Well, like, let's just start there because like, what is your background? Did you, I'm always curious when people kind of end up in these types of careers, like, did you, you know, did you know when you, from a young age that you would end up doing this as a career, but like, what brought you to an understanding of, you know, like, is it, it, you call it joy, joy, journey? (laughs) Yes. Journey to purpose. (laughs) Journey. It's a a little bit of a mouthful. Yeah. Journey to purpose. Like where, what's brought you to, to start this kind of movement and the business that you have? Yeah, um, I love this question because I feel that the starting of Journey to Purpose is really kind of a reflection of how life works. You don't really know where you're going. You don't really know what you're doing. You're figuring things out along the way. And if you are willing, you can pick up on the things that bring you the most joy and feel most aligned and kind of cherry pick your career and then do what you love for a living. And that's kind of what happened with Journey to Purpose. To answer your first question, I did not know that this is what I was going to be doing in my life at any point. If you would have told me, girl, you'll be talking to people about joy, teaching women and caregivers how they can prioritize well-being. I would have been like, okay, but where, how? (laughs) Um, But there were three key points that I think really put me on this path for prioritizing joy, where um, I was very much less than joyful. (laughs) I think a lot of people see me now and they're like, oh my goodness, you're so happy. Do you ever have any bad days? Life must be always going splendidly for you. 
But at one point I was pretty depressed. And the crazy part is I don't think I recognized it until I was on the other side. And those three points, the first of which being um, graduating from college, I graduated in 09 during the recession. Oh gosh. Okay. So, you know, you know, the vibes, it was not a good, I was having my second baby then. And yeah, my husband and I wasn't working and my husband was like, uh, they were doing rounds of layoffs. Yes. So we never knew. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. Very fun. And I feel like we're coming back to that time. Right. So I think the conversation around joy is so necessary, but at that time I'd spent so much of my life doing all of the right things as a daughter As a first generation child here in the US, my parents were from Nigeria. So I felt that I really prioritized the things that I was supposed to be doing, getting good grades and going to school and getting my degree. And I have now reached this point of my adulthood where I was supposed to be riding off into the sunset and able to pay off my student loan dream. Right. Yeah. (laughs) And then I'm not able to get a job. No one's hiring. I'm applying to jobs and hearing nothing back. And it really started to take a toll on my mental health and a conversation around self-worth and value. Because at that point I was like, I know I'm not dumb. Like I'm not an idiot. I know I'm a really smart person and I work really hard if somebody will give me a chance, but that wasn't happening. And so at that point in my life, I really decided, I made a choice and Actually, I can't even say that maybe the choice chose me (laughs) because Mm -hmm. every day on my lunch break um, at the place where I was working, which was my college internship, I would call my then boyfriend. He's now my husband. And this was one of the things that made me think, "Mm, you're a real one. But every day on my lunch break, I I kid you not, I would call him crying every Mm -hmm. day. Every day I would call him (laughs) crying. And with the same the same thought, I hate it here. Like, what is the point? I don't even know like what my purpose is. I would wake up in the morning feeling like, like what, what is the point of me being here? I felt like a waste of space. It it was really bad, Andrea. I would be in the bathroom uh, at the place where I was working and I would be sitting on the toilet crying for like 30 minutes. And then I would clean up my face, go back to my desk. And then I'd start crying about the fact that I had just been crying and I felt the need to (laughs) cover it. It was bad. And so one of these days after doing this for probably about a year, uh, (laughs) you can tell he's a good one. He hung in there. He just asked me a really simple question. And he said, Erica, like, well, what is it? What is it that you want to do? What do you want? What do you want to do? And I said, well, since you ask, uh, I don't know, but I know it's not this. And I want to like live in color and I want to be inspired by the people that I work with. And I want to um, create stuff. And I started listing off a a number of things that I wanted to start doing. So not even the, or that I, I didn't want in order to discover what I wanted to do. And after that conversation, um, he said, well, start somewhere, do something. And I was like, wow. What an idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, what, what a Brilliant. concept. <laughs> From that point, a week later, I, I took the things that I had stated to shared with him and I wrote them down on a list. And it's now what I call a joy quest. But a week later, I quit the place where I was working. I took a job in retail, which my parents, right, after all the hard work, were really excited about me having a four, mm-hmm. four-year college degree. And I went into retail, but this time I was super intentional about it. I worked at this really amazing boutique, independent boutique in the city. And that's kind of where I went on this journey of rediscovery. And at, in that time, I started doing poetry again. I started doing open mic nights. I got back into photography and videography. I um, started making jewelry again because I started my first business when I was 13. So I went back into creating jewelry for myself. And then it almost happened accidentally, but people that were shopping at the store liked the jewelry that I would be wearing. So then they asked me if I could sell it there. So I started selling my jewelry again and that was going really well. And then at one point, I was like, well, if all these amazing things are happening, what else have I always really wanted that I've never actually given myself permission to pursue? And at that point, I was like, well, I've always wanted a talk show. 
<laughs> but I had no like communications experience. And so um, I grabbed the camera, I grabbed a friend and I just started interviewing strangers on the streets of New York. And that led to a whole career as an on-air host where I was producing video content and shows for myself and other media agencies. And it was really just a period of understanding that just because you are in a place where you don't see where you're going doesn't mean that you shouldn't start pursuing the things that bring you joy. And mm. that kind of kicked off what is now a part of my coaching and consulting practices where it's really a matter of helping people get clear on what their vision is, what they want to do, what feels good, and helping them understand how to not only create the vision, but strategically align themselves with steps that allow them to bring the vision to fruition, but in a way that feels good. Because if it doesn't feel good, it's not sustainable. That's the first part of the journey. And then the, there's a second part where I became a mom after seven years yeah. af of building that on-air career. And I had this really big break at NBC. And I thought that that was going to be, or I thought it was going to be my big break. It was a big opportunity. And a week later, I found out I was pregnant and I cried for three days. And oh that that their their lives be transitioned into working with working caregivers. <laughs> okay. So okay. much. I know it was like a lot. <laughs> I know you fast forwarded through the, the last part, but I, I want to kind of pause in the middle there because you said some like really, really profound things that I, I think really, really wrap up like what life coaching is. Mm -hmm. You know, you said like, just because you don't, you can't see what the journey is ahead of you doesn't mean that you can't start doing small things that, that make you feel good to try to figure out what that, that journey is. And it's funny, I was having a conversation with a, a client a week or two ago, who's, who's starting her own business and, you know, she wants the steps to get the, to get there, quote unquote, get there. And I and I was very serious with her, like over Zoom. I'm like, listen, I'm going to tell you something. And I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people probably tell you is wrong. But a lot of this is throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. It is. Like you have to just experiment. Like you're collecting data along the way. Like, sure, there are some tried and true methods when it comes to like marketing a business and things like that. But a lot of it is... You know, I, you just have to figure out not only what works, but like, what do you actually enjoy doing? Because like, you don't want to go through life just doing all this stuff that people say is like, well, you should be meditating and you should be, you know, like checking off these boxes and you're like, I hate this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I love that you were sort of just what your then boyfriend did was kind of pointed you to like, what if instead of just focusing on the problem, we focused on the solution for a minute, like maybe. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then just sort of like, let's throw some spaghetti at the wall. Like make sure it's spaghetti that you like, <laughs> like don't do the whole wheat spaghetti. If you hate whole wheat spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's so funny because in that moment, I don't think that he realized like the light bulb that went up and it's so crazy because sometimes we can be so in our head about the things I find that this is something that comes up a lot with the clients that I work with. Most of the time when um, the women I work with speak about guilt or the resentment or feeling unfulfilled or feeling stuck, it's because they literally have not gotten out of their head to get another perspective. All of the yeah. internal dialogue that's happening. And it's very hard to see beyond what you are currently experiencing if you don't have another perspective. And that's kind of where the joy sometimes gets sucked out of the situation. But no one's meant to figure things out alone. We're meant to be in community. We're meant to help each other. We're meant to support each other with our gifts and our, our talents. And conversation is a wonderful and healing tool that um, we were given for a reason. So it was just really funny because I don't think he he realized in that moment the light switch. And at that point, it was like, well, I have the rest of my life to settle into a job that I hate. Why not try something different? <laughs> you know, those jobs aren't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you can still do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a specific op opinion uh, around purpose, but I'm curious what your definition of purpose is. Like, how do you how do you talk about that? Mm, I love this question because. I believe that purpose really doesn't, the definition for purpose doesn't need to be defined, right? Because there is a mm -hmm. de definition. Purpose is what you have been designed and built for. That's it. So when mm -hmm. people are like, I've lost sight of my purpose, I want to find my purpose. I, my perspective is you don't have to find what hasn't been lost. The purpose is in you. It's always been in you. 
more than Mm -hmm. likely the person may have kind of mushed the purpose to the side in pursuit of profit or making money or doing what other people have told them to do. So right. or making other people happy. Yes. Or making other people or happy. Others. Yes. Mm-hmm. So purpose is really just coming back to an understanding of who you are and knowing yourself well enough to appreciate and acknowledge your quirks your failures, the lessons that you may have gathered over the year, understanding how all of those things that you may think you need to suppress are actually a part of the superpowers and your story to to help you live in service to others, but from a position of joy. Because if it's already in you, there's nothing, there's nothing that needs to be added right? You were born mm-hmm. to do a very specific thing. The gifts that you have are gifts that only you can yield and wield in a very specific way. So the moment people just to start to embrace who they are and their authenticity and their joy, right? Because joy, I, I very highly believe is also correlated to the purpose that each person is meant to have. When you begin to embrace your joy, you will by default automatically also embrace your purpose because the two things are are related. You can't separate them. I agree with all of that. I get hot and bothered when people, or especially when certain people teach this, but like when you, when they think it's one specific thing, they feel almost frantic to find their purpose and, or they'll use me as, as an example. And they'll say like, well, you found yours, you know, like what you're doing and, and helping women. And I'm like, this, I don't think this is totally my purpose. Like that's on a, on a surface level. It's just sort of like the vehicle. But I think that my purpose is just being able to talk about and be in community with my experiences and listen to other people's experiences and like their stories. I think that as women throughout history, and you know, especially women in marginalized communities, like have not been given the platform or the space or the capacity to tell their stories and their experiences. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm re-listening to the book um Cassandra Speaks mm-hmm. by Elizabeth Lesser. Are you familiar with that book? No. Or like the the myth of Cassandra? No. So she's Oh God, is it Greek mythology? I'm so terrible at all of that Yahoo stuff. (laughs) She was like the daughter of Troy and Athena or something. And she was, um, some God fell in love with her and she rebuffed his advances and he put a curse on her that she would always be able to foresee the future. And she would tell people, but no one would believe her. That's thing. So it, it was like the worst <laughs> thing ever. And so she was the one who said like, Troy is going to be like, I don't know where they like invaded or something anyway. And no one be- believed her. And so it, th- this whole myth around her. Uh, and I think for many women, you know, like that's what we experience is like, no one listens mm-hmm. and no, no one is hearing our story. So I, I think that for many women, like a lot of the women I work with, they like, they're like, I want to be a life coach, but they have like this other job that they actually like. And like, they make a good living at. And I'm like, maybe it's just about like, you know, sharing your story and like being in community and and writing and things like that. So all of that to say, I have also found that as humans, we just, it's like inherent that we want to know that our life matters. Yes. Yes. And the vehicle (laughs) might look different for other people. And I, I think you would agree with me that like joy is a big part of that. Joy is the job. Joy is the part of it because it's the thing that allows you to know that your life matters and that you are worthy of pursuing the things that matter to you, but in a way where you don't feel that you're taking away from society or you're being selfish. Which a lot of women believe that, yes. that last part. Yes. So it allows you to be selfish with your joy in order to be selfless and live in service to others. But not from a position of burnout, overwhelm, a lack of fulfillment, resentment, all of those nasty things that we try to avoid. And we say, well, I'm doing this because, you know, I don't I don't want you to think that that I don't care. But then you're doing it in a way where the result that you desire to um, have people experience, right? You want them to feel loved, love. You want them to feel cared for. You want them to feel like you're a good woman or a good friend or a good whatever. But the way in which you may be going through those activities, because they don't bring you joy, is actually creating the opposite effect, right? Like, so I think that the the moment we begin to recognize that our joy is not a nice idea. I can't tell you how many times I've heard joy is a luxury for me. I'll get to joy when I get to it. I know, right? That face that you have on right now, 
<laughs> first time I heard it, I was like, uh, whoa, no, it's not. Joy is not a luxury. It's a birthright. Everyone, yeah. if joy is our inheritance. Everyone is deserving and worthy of joy. And the moment we begin to acknowledge that and accept it and really allow ourselves to live with that as our main priority, all the things that need to get done will get done, but will also be so much better in how we do those things. So it will benefit not only us, but society at large, our children and those that we're caring for that are coming next after us, the next generation, but also the people that have come before us. Because I think there's a lot to learn from a person giving themselves permission to live in their joy. I can't tell you how many times in my personal journey, even thinking about motherhood, at one point, it was not a happy situation. You know, I mm-hmm. felt very much run down and ragged. Part of the reason why I was crying when I found out that I was pregnant was because I thought my life was over, which was a lie from the pits of hell, because in many ways, it was really just beginning. But Based on every example of motherhood I'd seen before, all of those women lived in sacrifice, in self-sacrifice, and in service to others to the point where even when their kids were old, older, you'd say, Auntie, like, what's going on with you? You know, so-and-so just graduated. How are you doing? I'm good. Well, like, what are you doing? You know, as long as my family's good, I'm good. And it's like, okay, but they're they're all right. I spoke to them. They're fine. Like, so what are you mm-hmm. up to? And I just I just noticed a pattern where there really wasn't an, a, an understanding of who they were and what they could do now that they no longer had this responsibility. I just began to recognize that when we choose motherhood on our, our own terms, right, and choose to engage with motherhood on our own terms and, and, and really defining what's good for us and how we mother other people or nurture our relationships the benefits begin to radiate in us, but then it also allows us to show up as our best, fullest, and most glowing selves for those that we're helping, like our children. My relationship with my children changed the moment I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do it this way. My relationship with my husband also changed where, when I was like, I'm going to pursue my joy. He didn't get it at first, but, and and it felt very selfish. So I don't want to sugarcoat this transformation like it was something that was really easy. It had its really hard moments where I was like, no, I'm committing to this thing. But the result was more loving, right? More Mm -hmm. care, more understanding, more sex, you know, like more Mm -hmm. like just so much goodness because I felt good. I no longer felt like an alien, not only in my body, but in my spirit and my soul. And it even impacted my relationship with my parents where when they saw how I was parenting initially, they would say, why do you let them talk so much? Or like, why do you this? Like, there were so many questions. They just didn't get it. You know, like you you talk too much with the kids, but I was able to communicate with them why it was important. And that began to open conversations with my parents about how they were raised and yeah. what, what how they raised you. Yeah, you know, and so it, it creates healing across generations. So joy is so important. It's so much more than a nice idea. It really, it is the job. It is the job. It is. I love that you call it that. It is. Well, we have to take a quick ad break and we'll be back because I want to ask you about the how. So we'll be right back. (laughs) Shopify has already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. Today's podcast is sponsored by Midi Health. Ladies, are you over 40 like me and dealing with hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, some vaginal dryness, or weight gain? 
Don't just accept it as part of aging. These symptoms are often linked to hormonal changes during perimenopause and menopause. At Midi Health, they get it. Their experts know what you're going through and how to help. Midi clinicians are menopause specialists offering safe, effective, FDA-approved solutions. And guess what? Midi Care is covered by insurance. So stop pushing through it alone. Schedule a virtual visit and dive deep into your unique symptoms and health background. You'll walk away feeling heard and with a plan to start feeling better. Visit Midi Health today and reclaim your well-being. You deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com. Joinmidi.com. Well, you you were talking a little bit ago about you know switching perspectives and and working with clients and and how to find out what brings them more joy. And what I hear a lot, and you probably do too, is when you it, the easier question, especially for women, is what do you not want in your life rather than what do you want? Because when you ask what do you want, they're like deer in headlights. But when you ask them what they what do you want less of in your life, they can probably give you a list. Yeah. So I don't know if that's your experience too, but like how do you do you start there? Like how do you start with people or or you know, where can someone start who's listening today and like trying to find out how to have more joy in her life? Ah, yes. Um, so you are absolutely right. When you ask a lot of work, especially those who are working caregivers, because so much of their life revolves around other people, it's like, I don't know what I want because I don't know who I am, <laughs> you know? But I know what they want. Right? Yep. I know everything about their life, but I know nothing about my own. Um, but I have a three-step framework that I developed over the course of um, building and creating the journey to purpose. Um, and it's three steps. It is the journey process, as I like to call it. And it's really meant to help women rediscover, reconnect, and recommit to their purpose and identity through joy. And step one, the rediscovery piece, is really a journey to joy. Asking yourself, what does joy look like to me? What does it feel like? What is, what, what's involved in that joy? Who's involved in that joy? It's really an immersion of oneself into nothing but joy. <laughs> And the way that um, I like to have people start this process is to visualize it, visualize joy, even if it's something where you can't necessarily have it or so you think in this moment, you you can begin to understand what it feels like to have it. And having that feeling and experiencing it, you can then begin to understand what's required to recreate that feeling. Um, and so I love vision boards. I am a huge proponent of them. I love them, love them. They're so much fun. I also love crafting and doing things with my hands. So it kind of makes sense. And visualizing joy for individuals, sometimes I'll have them go on a joy quest. So there are a number of ways that people can begin this process of rediscovery. They can do it through a joy quest, which is a program that I created that's 45 minutes to an hour. They can purchase it online and it takes them through that. There are videos and worksheets involved, which is kind of like a vision board with words. I also have a vision board program that I offer a couple of times a year and in corporate spaces for organizations that are looking to um, communicate their vision, values, and mission with individuals that are on their teams, but also to understand what is important to the members of their team. The second piece in reconnecting with joy is to understand how to propel purpose. So once someone has gone on their journey to joy and they have all these things that make them feel great and they have a little more clarity around what brings them joy, they can then begin to sift through all of those things to understand how they may align with their purpose. And with that process, it's really a matter of getting clear on the habits that need to be produced in order to make joy not just a moment, but a lifestyle, right? Because I think sometimes people think this idea of joy is like, everything has to be perfect. Like when X, Y, and Z happens or in the future, when I'm making a million dollars, then I'll have joy. But then it's like, yeah. you may get to that point and then it's like, well, on to the next thing. And if you're yeah. never enjoying what you've done, what is the point? You've essentially created a never ending job and task list for yourself because how you feel throughout the process matters just as much as arriving at the result. With this, we talk about joy led habits, right? Not just how do you arrive at the thing, but how can you do it 
in a way that feels great. And you're able to check off those things, one feel good thing at a time. And then the last piece of recommitting to joy is really about activating accountability, getting clear on who is involved in this process with you, making sure that you're not going on the journey alone. I have something that I call a vibe tribe that I encourage everyone to um, get take take part in, right? Having a a sister circle, if you will, or a brother circle. It doesn't matter who's in your vibe tribe, but what's most important is that you're communicating your vision with other people so that one, they can hold you to it, but two, maybe you can inspire them to go on the journey with you so you're not doing it alone. Um, so yeah, that's the three-step process. Rediscover, reconnect, recommit. Mm. I love that. And I love a good, what is that? Alliteration? Yeah. <laughs> words, words escape me at this stage in my life. <laughs> Well, you know what I'm curious about, and you know, especially because you talk about joy so much. What is your what is your definition, or can you explain to us like how how you talk about the difference between happiness and joy? What's the difference? Ooh, yes, um, I love this question because I don't think a lot of people do think about the difference. Happiness is fickle. <laughs> and yeah. Happiness is fickle as you know. Yeah, it is just. Yeah, you can say okay. It. <laughs> It's here one day. It's not like joy is deep rooted. Happiness is really a matter of the surface, right? Like what you may be portraying, but it's not how you actually feel inside. So a lot of people can fake happy, but you can't fake joy. Right. Yeah. Like, and even in the moments where you may feel that things are less than ideal, if you are deep rooted in joy and you have clarity around, um, the benefits of it. You're able to sustain your joy even in really hard times. And I think that even in considering the work that I do a lot of times, and again, how people perceive me, you're always happy. Like you're always like in such a good mood, but I tell them all the time, I cry a lot. Like, yeah, I cry a lot because it's only in it, in, in truly acknowledging and owning how you feel in any given moment that you're actually able to arrive at joy. So Mm -hmm. I may be crying like, ugly crying one minute. Right. And then like five minutes from then I may be on like a high and skipping. And it's not because I'm I'm emotionally unstable, you know, it's because I felt the feelings and I'm also, I've, I've been able to release them and I'm now clear on what's required in those moments and surrendering them. I usually end up getting clear on what I should do next and how I should do it. Right. But you have to you have to acknowledge how you feel in any given time because feelings are given to us for a reason. And joy is at the top of the spectrum. So we want to arrive there, but you can't get there if you're if you're not in a good place and you haven't even taken the time to discover why you're not happy or why you're not in a good place. You know, so it usually revolves um, going through a range of emotions until you're able to get back at that joy spot. And that's how I describe it too. Like happiness is more of a surface level kind of like outside. I think it's a real emotion. I just think it's a little, it's a little more surface level. And to me, joy is like a full body experience. Like it is a somatic, many times spiritual experience. Yes. Yes. I feel that when someone feels joy, it's like a fully immersive experience where it's not, it, it is something that you don't just feel, but you can literally like taste it. You can see it. You can, you can feel it. It's there's texture to it, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and I almost feel like sometimes the moments where I feel the most joy is almost like, I feel like I'm floating. Like I'm in the right place at the right time doing exactly what I'm meant to do. And sometimes that's nothing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like a high, but it's a substance free high, you know, like you, you feel like you are divinely connected. Like, yes, the best, you know, I feel like I'm in a movie. (laughs) I guess if I have to describe it, like sometimes I feel like when I'm at like my most like joy filled moments. I feel like I'm in a movement and every, I'm, I feel like I'm in a musical. I'm singing I'm yeah. skipping, and floating. I, I agree with you. And I think this is kind of an important topic to, to talk about. And I hadn't anticipated that we would go this direction, but I have found that through my recovery, I'm, I'm 12 years sober and, okay. and, you know, and I have been, thank you. And I've been really sort of like on a quest, I think my whole life, you know, to try to, to, to seek healing and things like that. And I, I think the things that, that have helped a lot in terms of getting to that place of what you were just describing of joy 
is understanding and accepting and walking into the full spectrum of all of them, all of the emotions. So I look at kind of like happiness and sadness is like on the same sort of level, like opposite each other though. And then you have joy, bliss, euphoria. And then on the opposite side of that is grief, terror, sorrow, which I'll be honest with you, like even when you know, I was deep in sort of like my unhealthy coping mechanisms, I would limit myself to happiness. And then on the other side, sadness, like I had sad moments where I was crying and things like that. But did I allow myself to like drop into real grief, terror, sorrow? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I had moments of happiness, but did I allow myself to, to drop into joy, ecstatic, like uh, hope and things like that? No. Mm. No, too scary, too vulnerable. Mm. So I, I I explain that and I hope for people listening that there's there's a wide range of emotions like that. And I think that when you start to heal, whether you have a, you know, you struggle with like substance use or maybe it's, you know, eating disorder or even, you know, process disorders like codependence and things like that. Those are the things that hold you back from feeling those real strong emotions like joy. Yes. And there's so much beauty that's on the other side, because if anyone is seeking to like figure out what's next, you will figure that out once you've gone through it. Like, like mm-hmm. I mean, you, it, what's the phrase? Ain't no way to it, but through it or whatever the case is. Yeah. You and know, look at it retro- retroactively and be like, oh, there it was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the beautiful part about even doing that is that it not only benefits you, but it creates an opportunity for a testimony that you can then share with somebody to help them get through the other side. And I feel like mm-hmm. it becomes then not just a conversation of how do I arrive at at happiness? How do I arrive at joy? How do I like get through this feeling? But really a conversation of embracing faith over fear. And mm-hmm. that, like that is the key to being able to live a joy-led life. Because when you think about it, almost any decision that we make as humans falls into either of those categories. But so yeah. much of the world operates from a position of fear versus faith. And faith is the thing that leaves you feeling unlimited. It leaves you feeling limitless. It liberates you. It excites you. It creates momentum for what's next so that you can fully engage yourself in this one life that we have to live. Mm-hmm. Everything else keeps you bound. You know, it keeps you small. It keeps you almost like uh, anxious and worried. Yeah, and there's, there's no fun there, you know? And we're meant yeah. to have a good time while we're here because we're only here yeah. for a little while. It's just a microsecond. Y- yeah, and I think that like that place that you just described, you know, feeling like afraid and bound up and limited, like we get comfortable there. Like I have definitely been comfortable there. Mm. I circle back there like a like an old blanket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you are. I, I know you. you. <laughs> and I, I just, I want to acknowledge that for people because like, I don't want people to think that they're wrong or they're broken mm, or true. for like, if you keep going back to that blanket, because like it works to protect you in some instances. Yes. I completely agree. But you're a choice. You. Yes. I think the thing is just recognizing when you're going back there and why you're going back there and making sure that you're not staying there too long. Cause you're right. Mm-hmm. I do compassion. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we do need that in order to kind of like regroup ourselves for the sure. what's next, you know, like I know I go there too. Right. <laughs> but then I do have tools and strategies that I use once I'm in that space. So again, I can feel the feelings under my blanket, but then, mm-hmm. um, to help me, to help pick me up out of those moments so that I can get back to the mission of why I'm here. Yeah. Uh, we're, we have to take one more ad break. When we come back, I want to circle back to something and then I'm going to ask you about the holiday season. So be right back. Fast forward to the end of 2024 and think about your goals. What can you do right now to give yourself the best chance of succeeding? If you want to learn a new language, you absolutely should get Babbel. 
Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Now it's so easy to speak simple conversation phrases with the guy that takes care of my lawn without having to consult language apps. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash noise. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash noise, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash noise. Rules and restrictions may apply. I have definitely been in that place where my paycheck ran out before the next one got here. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. You can use Earnin to pay for a girl's night out, a last minute gift for a loved one, or even summer camp for the kids. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R. N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in noise under podcast when you sign up. It really, really helps the show. Noise under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. <laughs> Okay. One of the things I just want to mention before we, we move on is, you know, I was talking about the difference between happiness and joy and sadness and grief and sorrow. And some people might be thinking like, well, isn't it just semantics? And like, I used to think that too, until I really felt it all. Then I was like, oh, it's not like, this is a full range. And, and I just want to, before we move on, like, and I, and I'm assuming you agree with me, like, I think part of our purpose as humans and part of what can bring us even more joy is when we allow ourselves to feel that full spectrum of emotions. Like that's life. Like Mm -hmm. that's what it means to be human. Yes, I completely agree. I guess maybe it's obvious by now, but I do identify as a Christian and I do believe that God, the creator has gifted us the, the joy of having feelings because Mm -hmm. he himself has these feelings, right? I think no one is meant to feel that they are one dimensional or that they only can operate in one particular way. The, the, the joy of life is the fact that it can go in so many different ways. And we're meant to explore all of those things. So I do believe that we're meant to fully experience the range of emotions. And we're also meant to understand the the path that they can think can guide us on if we allow ourselves to feel them you know and and the moment we start to suppress them I think is the moment that we really kind of cut ourselves off from the fullness of the experience of life you know yeah it's an adventure and I it it, it, oh god (laughs) (laughs) the capital a (laughs) adventure in all caps yeah I I'm with you and and in in from where I'm sitting, I think God, the universe, source, whatever it is, I believe they use they, them pronouns. <laughs> just have always thought it was like genderless, like it's just this whatever. But I, I agree with you. I think they put us here, the entire universe, and we have been blessed as humans to have this adventure, this experience of human emotions, which are wild, just wild to me when I really sit back and think about just how our brains work and how our bodies work. Like what? Like, (laughs) it's amazing, but I don't want to get too far. Like, you know, get all esoteric and mystical. No, but I'm like right there with you because I'm like, (laughs) otherwise, how does this stuff exist? Like, come on the rainbow with me. Let's go, Erica. (laughs) (laughs) Slide down. (laughs) Right. Otherwise, like, what's the point? Uh, Okay. So I want to ask about, you know, this episode is coming out like before the holidays. And I I think, 
I think no one listening gets to evade the stress of the holidays, no. whether it's, you know, Thanksgiving or the Christmas or Hanukkah or however you celebrate. So how can people, like, what is your advice about managing the stress around this time of year? Mm, well, I would say, okay, a little prep could hurt, right? But not the prep in the way that people think, like, where it's like, I need to start getting my Christmas list or my whatever, my gift list ready and da 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 no. I think the the preparation should really be what is the intention for this holiday season? How do I want to feel at the end of this holiday season? What is the main task or mission for the holiday season? Is it connection? Is it cultivating a, a feeling of love and warmth? Is, rested? Is it, I want to feel ooh, rested. Oh, I like that because I always want to feel rested. Okay, I'm not trying to be raggedy after that. The holidays are over. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Yeah. So you get it, right? Like coming up with whatever the vision is that you are trying to create for the season and then getting clear around what it would take to create that feeling, right? With the people that you plan on being with. Is it something where you want to do that through a dinner? Is it something where you you you, you want to home cook the dinners because that's a part of your love language or you want to create a bonding experience with the people that are there? Is it something where you're like, eh, I'm not even cooking because that does not bring me joy. And if the intention is to feel connection, you can do that while you order out. It's fine. You know what I mean? But I think each person really needs to get clear, especially if someone's hosting, um, on what it is that they they want, the, the feeling they want to create and, and how they themselves want to feel after the experience is over. Because if you keep that top of mind, it's really easy to let go of the things that typically start to stress us out and overwhelm us during the holiday season. And you're also able to, if you get off track, right, and you start doing the most, because let's face it, we tend to do that sometimes with women. Yeah. Um <laughs> If you start doing the most, you have something to come back to, to really start, uh, recenter yourself and what, what the main, the main mission was. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, it's, it, it is again, the same thing as rediscovery, right? Like rediscovering what I want the, the season to look like, creating a vision, going on that, that joy quest and envisioning the thing before the thing happens, um, so that you can get clear on not only what needs to be done, but how you want to do it in a way that feels sustainable, aligned, and anchored in joy. Yeah. I I love that. It, just like setting the intention of like, how what is the experience that you're trying to create for yourself? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it's, we're trying to create an experience for someone else, like yes. making memories for our kids and then they hate it, you know, and then we're mad. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, see what I did for you. And then they're probably looking at you like, Ain't nobody asked you to do that. You know, you know, nobody asked you to do that. And truth be told, the kids will be happy with whatever you do anyway. What they would probably be like, what would probably create that experience that you're seeking is a happy parent. Right. It's not yeah. about what's done, but it's about how you feel as you do it. So it even comes back to that initial conversation about um the reason why we do the things that we do, you know, trying to people please all of that and and getting lost in in um understanding like why we do the things that we do and trying to create a feeling like that ultimately ends up creating that resentment and lack of mm -hmm. fulfillment and all of those things. So it's opposite of the feeling that you're trying to create when really, if you just focus on yourself and make sure that you feel good in any given moment, that feeling that you want to create of being selfless and generous and patient and kind and loving and having your people feel cared for, all of that will come when you are good and full of your own joy. Yeah, I think it's it's a slippery slope <laughs> and it's, it's definitely one to, I think, spend some time digging into and thinking about, you know, I have known people who have set boundaries around Christmas gifts and they're like, we're not exchanging Christmas gifts this year. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, like that. I, I'm one of those in, in a different say, way whatever it is they need to say. And also I saw a, a TikTok the other day where it was a, a stitch and people that don't know what that is. It's like where you, you use someone else's video and then it cuts and you create your own kind of like almost like a response, like within a video. And this woman had stitched another woman's video where the, the first woman was saying like, here's some tips on how to make the most amazing holiday porch this year. And then the, the, the other woman came in and, and said something 
like where she was kind of making fun of her and like, I just want to have like my dead plants and my messy <laughs> pork. Thank you very much. And it was meant to be a joke and kind of like, no, we don't want your Pinterest mom. And <laughs> and I laughed about it. But then I was like, you know what? I have a couple of friends where that brings them so much joy to to decorate for the holidays. And like, they don't do it to make TikToks about it. They don't do it to take pictures for it's on Facebook or Pinterest or whatever. Like they genuinely do it for themselves to bring them joy. I don't do that. Like that's not my thing. Like I have dead plants on my porch. But for me, <laughs> it is Christmas music. Mm. Like it is never too early to have Christmas music. And I'll tell you what, and I was an early adopter, but Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas. Yeah. I lose my motherfucking mind. <laughs> when that song comes on. I don't care what time of year it is. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> It's a good song. It, it is a really, it's a classic, okay? Oh, it's a bop. Are the kids still saying that? <laughs> That's so much. You know what it is for me? It's the it's the sense of Christmas. Give me a good pine candle, sandalwoody something. Like, oh Mad my like God. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like, and, and I think beyond that, I mean, I guess it's food season. So, you know, that LBs are coming, but I think just the, the warmth of having people want to gather and it not, not being something where they feel like I have to pencil it in, you know, <laughs> give me a candle and give me, give me some community and it's Christmas like all year round, you know, I just, candle community. yeah. <laughs> maybe some cake yeah oh there you go <laughs> you can't not have cake at the holidays <laughs> yeah I, I just I think it's it's about embracing the parts of the holidays that truly bring you joy and also being okay with letting go of the things that don't yes. oh that's good because so many people are trying to do the things that don't bring them joy to create the memory but then the mirror the memory is frustration <laughs> like and resentment. yeah that mm. that becomes yeah. then the memory rather than like what what would what would really make me feel cozy inside? I feel like that should be uh-huh. what the what what the uh I guess preface of the, the holidays is like what makes you feel cozy, you know? Attention. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I now I feel joyful after having this conversation with you. And you are also just such a joy. And I and I want For people sure. to to learn more about you and to be in your world. So where do you want people to go to learn more about you and your work? Ooh, you can visit my site, ericalassan.com. And there they can learn more about the workshops that I offer, speaker services, if someone would like. You have a quiz on- online, right? Like I do. It's called the Joy Gem Quiz. And it allows you to learn how you can begin to maximize your time, energy, and space for joy. Um, nice. And integrate that into your life one feel good thing at a time. That can be found on the site. Show notes. Yes. Yeah. So that's it. EricaLasan.com slash quiz. And we'll put that in the, in the show notes. And thank you so much for being here. I, I love this so much. Like so many great gems in here and listeners, thank you so much for, for choosing to spend your time with us. I'm so incredibly yes. grateful for that. And remember it's our life's journey to make ourselves better humans and our life's responsibility to make the world a better place. Bye for now. Hey listeners, if you work for a company that does professional development, did you know that I offer leadership training, more specifically empathy and assertiveness and how it makes stronger teams? You can see more on my speaking page at andreaowen.com slash speaking, where there's also a contact button there so you can fill out that form and let's chat. I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. 
In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts.